one of those paintball guns? Yeah, you ought to come with us sometime. Oh, no thanks, I'm from Nebraska. When we shoot things, it's because we want to eat them or make them leave our boyfriends alone. <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 times Penny was a savage on The Big Bang Theory. I have a working knowledge of the entire universe and everything it contains. <laughs> Radiohead. For this list, we'll be looking at Penny's fiercest, most badass, and occasionally brutal comebacks and takedowns throughout this long-running sitcom. Which Beast Mode Penny moment was your favorite? Penny for your thoughts in the comments. Number 20. Penny's Magic Potion when the ladies' trip to Vegas is derailed, Penny, Amy, and Bernadette join the guys for a game of Dungeons and Dragons. Penny's first zinger of the night follows Sheldon's apprehensions over playing the game with women. What's the big deal? Raj bailed so we could use some extra players. Well, I've just never played Dungeons and Dragons with girls before. Oh, don't worry, sweetie. No one has. We could almost hear the collective gasp of D&D fans everywhere who felt personally targeted by her cutting remark. Still, Penny realizes that if she's going to spend the evening with Sheldon Cooper, she's going to need some help. And luckily, she knows just the rather on-theme magic potion to do the trick. We don't consume alcohol during Dungeons & Dragons, but it impairs our judgment. <laughs> oh, this isn't alcohol. It's a magic potion that makes me like you. Harsh? Maybe. But we'd be lying if we said we hadn't thought about quoting her when dealing with difficult people in our own lives. Number 19. What up, Moon Pie? When Sheldon forgets his flash drive at home, it's Penny to the rescue. Unfortunately, he hasn't quite grasped the concept of asking politely, which prompts Penny to have a little fun pushing all his buttons. Arguably the most savage moment is when she goes through Sheldon's private correspondence with his Mima. Sheldon, are these letters from your grandmother? Don't read those letters. Oh, look, she calls you Moon Pie. That is so cute. Put down the letters! If he was ever going to explode with rage, this would be the moment. Although she admits she went too far, she still can't help one more dig. I kind of crossed a line. Put him back on. Thank you. I'm back. What up, Moon Pie? <laughs> we wonder how Sheldon reacted when he got home and saw the fate of his novelty puzzle box. Did you hear the click? Not yet. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> In Penny's defense, this might have all been avoided if Sheldon had just started with please. Number 18. No robot is a match for Penny. In the first episode of season four, Howard finds a multitude of uses for the robot arm he built, including using it to serve up dinner. Luckily, he did so before, well, surely you remember what he used it for after that. Everyone's super impressed by this new technology, perhaps none more than Sheldon, who informs Penny that she might one day lose her waitressing job to a similar machine. You realize, Penny, that the technology that went into this arm will one day make unskilled food servers such as yourself obsolete. Most robots might be quick and efficient, but they don't have Penny's lovable charm and unparalleled customer service, as she so quickly reminds Sheldon. Really? They're gonna make a robot that spits on your hamburger? We don't condone contaminating other people's food, but if Penny got around to it a few times, well, we're also not saying Sheldon didn't deserve it. Number 17. Directing Sheldon to the Right Person Sheldon's a creature of habit, and he values a rigid routine. We don't eat here. I don't know what's good. Well, it's all good. Statistically unlikely. <laughs> Just get a hamburger. You like hamburgers. I like the hamburgers where we usually have hamburgers. In this episode, he's finally become accustomed to the burgers at the Cheesecake Factory and considers making the establishment his permanent Tuesday eatery. Since this is still pretty early in their friendship, Penny hasn't yet warmed up to Sheldon or grown accustomed to his jibber-jabber. Interesting. Do you know where the phrase jibber-jabber comes from? Oh my god, you're about to jibber-jabber about jibber-jabber. <laughs> so when he asks her about the possibility of reserving their table every week for the foreseeable future, she dismisses his query with a snarky retort. Really? Oh, yay. <laughs> Who do I speak to about permanently reserving this table? Um, I don't know, a psychiatrist? <laughs> Leonard's amused, but he's the only one laughing at their table. Poor Sheldon, always misunderstood. Still, no one could fault Penny for beating around the bush. Number 16. Messing with Raj 
As you likely recall, in the earlier seasons of The Big Bang Theory, Raj struggled with speaking to most women, unless he was intoxicated. Haven't you been listening to me? I cannot talk to women! Um, Raj… No, no, let's see how long it takes him. <laughs> You say you can't talk to women, but you've been talking to me." We're told he suffers from selective mutism, a very real and severe anxiety disorder. Unfortunately, on the show, it's often played for laughs. So wait, wait, wait. Howard lives with his mother and Raj can't speak to women unless he's drunk. Go. <laughs> oh, that's fascinating. Selective mutism is quite rare. It was perhaps best encapsulated by this exchange between Penny and Raj. Penny walks into the apartment and immediately addresses Kuthrapali. Yo, Raj, talk to me. <laughs> ah, sorry, just screwing with ya. He freezes up and looks crestfallen as the pressure builds. What was she expecting? That somehow the element of surprise would free him from his disorder? She then reveals she's just messing with him and everyone laughs. But you have to admit, that was pretty brutal. Number 15. Penny Gets the Breast of Leonard Leonard's initially dismayed when his mom's book is on Penny's class reading list. Recommended reading list for my psychology class. Uh, <laughs> come on, not that book. It, it, it's got like every horrible story from my childhood in it. However, he soon realizes what a powerful tool it can be and uses it to manipulate her. It's Howard's failure to replicate Leonard's success later on that causes the truth to come out. Penny sets quite the trap for her devious boyfriend. We can't imagine a more brutal punishment than getting him all riled up before unleashing his cold, straight-talking psychiatrist mother on him. Mom? I understand you have been whining about my parenting in order to emotionally manipulate your girlfriend. <laughs> I, uh... Bernadette told me everything. Now you don't get the left or the right. And as we all know, Beverly Hofstadter can barely open her mouth without letting loose a tirade of biting quips. Let's discuss why you continue to involve me in your sex life. Oh, please, mommy. No, mommy! We imagine Leonard learned his lesson in the same way one has a bucket of ice water dumped on them. Number 14. Penny was a jerk as a teenager. When Leonard gets an unwelcome blast from the past, Penny's forced to reevaluate her own youth. With some help from Bernadette and Amy, she soon realizes that she was not a nice person as a teen. And that's putting it mildly. What she calls a harmless prank is actually super cruel. Kathy Geiger got really good grades, so we blindfolded her, tied her up, and left her in a cornfield overnight. <laughs> That's awful. No, it was funny. Everyone laughed. <laughs> she tries to make amends, but it's too little too late. So her friends suggest she'll feel better by performing good deeds. While she's initially on board, this glimmer of altruism quickly fades away. Usually, we're all for Penny's savageness, but stealing clothes from a donation bin is all kinds of low. Look at these cute jeans someone just threw away. <laughs> Donated. to a poor waitress who loves a boot cut. <laughs> We're glad she ultimately had a change of heart. Number 13. Penny is not into Howard and Raj's new look. Before meeting Bernadette, Howard went to disturbing lengths to meet women, often dragging Raj along in his crazy schemes. In one of their most outlandish attempts, the duo dresses up in goth style, tattoo sleeves and all. Penny wastes no time informing the guys exactly what she thinks of their new look. What's going on, day dwellers? <laughs> oh man, did the kiss army repeal don't ask, don't tell? After they leave, Leonard can't help but make a jibe of his own too. They're gonna get beaten up at that club. This provides the perfect setup for Penny, who knocks it out of the park with these pithy last words. They're gonna get beaten up at Walgreens. <laughs> Penny's delivery may be cruel, but her advice is usually sound, something Howard and Raj come to learn by the end of the night. Number 12. Penny's got no time for toys. Penny is understandably mad when the guy's new movie memorabilia costs her a day's pay at work. In her fury, she ruthlessly berates them, taking aim at their likes, hobbies, and collectibles. My God, you are grown men! How could you waste your lives with these 
stupid toys and costumes and comic books and- We can understand why she's angry, but geez, did she have to make it so personal? It doesn't help when Sheldon seemingly misreads her frustration or just chooses to ignore it, inciting this fiery takedown of the time machine. Please, it's not a time machine. If anything, it looks like something Elton John would drive through the Everglades. We have to admit, our hearts sank a little when she called them all pathetic. Pathetic. All of you, completely pathetic. The impact her berating leaves on Leonard in particular is heartbreaking. True, she later apologizes, but she ultimately can never unsay her harsh words. Number 11. Fighting for her friends Whether she's warding off Howard's advances or tormenting Sheldon, Penny gets her fair share of snappy comebacks in this episode. Anyone could rent that apartment now. An opera singer, the cast of Stomp. <laughs> Yeah, a tap dancing pirate with a wooden leg. However, perhaps the most memorable of them all is incited by her rivalry with new neighbor Alicia. Penny feels threatened when there's a new queen bee in the hive and tries her hardest to get back on top. Although she's jealous of all the attention the guys give their new neighbor, she also recognizes that she's just using them. Things turn catty fast during their confrontation, and Penny demonstrates just how far she'll go to defend her friends. Please don't take advantage of them. Who says I'm taking advantage of them? Come on, they're doing everything for you because you're leading them on. We don't know what the guys would do without Penny in their corner. Number 10. No time for Raj's shaming. Yes, Penny's a fierce defender of her friends, but she's also not above using Leonard's infatuation with her to her advantage. In fact, we imagine she'd have to sell a whole lot of cheesecakes to even make a dent in the tab she amassed for all that takeout. Still, we don't approve of the way Raj, assisted by Howard, shames her for scoring a free meal. What? No, he, he said if he had woman parts, he'd eat for free the rest of his life. But this is Penny we're talking about, and she won't take that kind of talk from anyone, as Raj soon finds out. Yeah, but she wouldn't be able to talk to yourself. If she were paying in savage takedowns, Penny would have repaid her debt several times over and still had plenty to spare. Number 9. Keeping her libido in check Sheldon has a habit of speaking out of line. However, Penny's never afraid to put him back in his place. So, do you find the weather satisfying? Are you currently sharing in the triumph of some local sports team? <laughs> What's wrong with you? You're freaking me out. In season two, Leonard starts dating Dr. Stephanie Barnett, much to Sheldon's delight. He tells Penny that out of all of Leonard's girlfriends, she's the only one that he finds tolerable. Yes, Penny included. Of the handful of women Leonard's been involved with, she's the only one I have ever found tolerable. <laughs> well, what about me? The statement stands for itself. <laughs> Then, in a very Sheldon-esque way, he asks his neighbor to refrain from acting upon her urges so as not to come between Leonard and his Sheldon-approved paramour. Penny's unimpressed and responds with a biting remark. I would ask you to find some way to suppress your libido. <laughs> I could think about you. Fine, whatever works. Unfortunately, her fiery comeback is lost on Sheldon. However, we all got it and collectively ooed and gasped at our televisions. Number 8. Sheldon's an alien Throughout the show, it's been implied that Sheldon's either a robot or not of this planet. Based on that ring on your finger, I'd say you're pretty good at controlling robots. <laughs> Careful, that's my fiancé you're talking about. And I can program him to hurt you. <laughs> Penny seems to buy into the latter based on a couple of cutting remarks she's thrown his way over the years. For instance, after their apartment gets robbed, Sheldon decides to leave Pasadena forever, leading Penny to ask him how the mothership will find him if he keeps moving around. I'm leaving Pasadena forever. Tell me how that's overreacting. Come on, Sheldon, you can't move. Don't you need to stay in one place so the mothership can find you when it returns? <laughs> A few episodes later, Sheldon corners her in the laundry room to convince her to let him take her place on Leonard's Switzerland trip. She knows what's coming and responds with a suitably disparaging clapback. All right, let's dispense with the friendly banter. <laughs> I believe you know why I'm here. Well, I always figured it was to study us, discover our weaknesses, and report back to your alien overlords. <laughs> we don't know if aliens exist, but Penny makes some pretty compelling, albeit sarcastic, arguments. 
Number seven, helping Leonard get his tuition refunded. Leonard agrees to walk a mile in Sheldon's metaphorical shoes until he resolves the problem of a long overdue DVD. The idea is that a sweater will represent Sheldon's figuratively itchy brain when it comes to unresolved issues. If this sweater shuts you up, I'm gonna make a fortune selling them to everyone we know. <laughs> now, all I need to do is head down to the video store and return the DVD. However, things quickly spiral out of hand when what was seemingly an easy task soon becomes an impossible mission. Leonard spends much more time in the uncomfortable garment than expected, and it starts taking a physical and emotional toll. It's called proving a point. Is the point you're an idiot? <laughs> Gentlemen, please. Leonard is trying to walk a mile in my metaphorical shoes. Penny urges him to take it off when Sheldon isn't around, but he refuses. So she tries another, more direct approach to highlight his stupidity. Smile. Well, what is that? What is that for? So you can send it to Princeton and get your money back. <laughs> we wonder what stung more, that sweater or Penny's sharp tongue. Number six, the importance of 21 seconds. In this episode, the guys enthusiastically get ready to go watch a version of Raiders of the Lost Ark that contains 21 extra seconds of footage that's never been released. Howard extends the invitation to Penny, but she's not exactly grabbing her fedora and whip and jumping for joy. What? 21 seconds? That'll be like seeing a whole new movie! Exactly. They say it finally solves the submarine controversy. She even pokes a little fun at the guys over their excitement. Leonard comments that they'd still be a couple if she understood the value of an extra 21 seconds. But Penny disagrees. Yeah, I think I'll pass, but you guys enjoy your extra 21 seconds. But if I could make you understand why this is such a cool thing, we'd still be together. Mm, yeah, no, we wouldn't. <laughs> it's rather harsh, especially in front of all of his friends, but it's still incredibly funny. Howard and Raj are on hand to help bring it home. Uh-huh, I'm guessing 21 seconds had something to do with that too. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard might want some ice for that double burn. Number five, poking fun at Howard's dating record. Until Penny introduced him to Bernadette, Howard's dating record wasn't exactly something to write home about. Look, Howard, this is our third date, and we both know what that means. We do. We're told that his dates usually required payment or inflating, and his handful of flings never lasted long. So when he gets a phone call during dinner and happily declares that he's going to get busy that night, Penny's understandably confused. Ooh, looks like I'm gonna have sex tonight. <laughs> Hey, baby. What she doesn't know is that Howard and Leslie Winkle have recently started a friends with benefits relationship. So when he gleefully shares his evening plans, she jumps straight to the most logical explanation. His right hand is calling him? <laughs> no, it's Leslie Winkle. It's a long story. Penny's a master of throwing shade at the guys, but this has to be one of her finest and funniest moments of savagery. Number four, quick draw. In one of the show's most surprising moments, we learn that Penny and Raj spent the night together. Really? Still can't talk to me? Following this, it becomes clear that both parties have very different takeaways from the night's events, leading Raj to make a confession. I had trouble putting it on, and you tried to help, and uh, that was all she wrote. Penny lets him down gently, but that doesn't stop him from trying to show off to his friends later on. When Penny stops by to tell the guys she's decided to move home, Raj tries to make it all about him. If only he'd seen the look on her face, he probably would have stopped talking sooner. But with just a few short, sharp words, Penny's able to render him silent. Be just one of those memories you have and can call to mind when you're feeling blue or you're in the shower. <laughs> hey, what you doing, quick draw? Number three, fighting with Sheldon. In arguably one of the most iconic episodes, Penny and Sheldon engage in battle after he banishes her from the apartment. All right, that's it. Strike three. Ooh, strike three. <laughs> I'm banished? What the hell kind of crap is that? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll talk to him. The escalating feud sees both pull out all the stops to come out on top, and some of it is plain vicious. However, it also gives us some of our favorite acerbic quotes courtesy of this Nebraska native. 
Penny delivers the first blow when she refuses to take Sheldon's order at the Cheesecake Factory. You can't do that. Not only is it a violation of California state law, it flies directly in the face of Cheesecake Factory policy. Yeah, no, there's a new policy. No shoes, no shirt, no Sheldon. <laughs> Later, during their heated exchange in the laundry room, she fires back at Sheldon with the ultimate comeback. Woman, you are playing with forces beyond your ken. Yeah, well, your ken can kiss my Barbie. Perhaps she has no idea what Sheldon's talking about, but that doesn't stop her from getting the last stinging word. Number two, Penny takes down Howard. Being a savage isn't necessarily a bad thing, and sometimes it's even warranted. Well, I, that may be a slight exaggeration. You'd be the only doable girl. <laughs> You're a pig, Howard. Case in point, Penny reaches her breaking point with Howard's incessant lewd remarks and lets him have it. She doesn't hold back, and her harsh words leave everyone stunned in silence. Flirting? You think I'm flirting with you? I am not flirting with you! No woman is ever Grow old and die alone. In her defense, Penny had been warding off Howard's crudeness for ages while he showed no consideration for her feelings. Yes, Howard's feelings got hurt by her scathing remarks, but at least he finally got the message. Many fans believed this was a turning point for Howard Wallowitz, and he was better off for it. Yes, now he knows what bathtubs are capable of doing when you don't treat them with respect. And we have Penny and her barbed words to thank for that. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Clapping back at the bride and groom's moms. Penny won't have any drama on her friend's big day. Sheldon loves Amy and he would never hurt her on her wedding day or any other day, so park it. Oh, you sit down too. Forever 63, one of fashion's fiercest critics. And there's Amy showing all kinds of ankle <laughs> in an outfit I'm assuming is from Forever 63. With your face. If her words don't say it, her face will. Loud and clear. I can handle casual. Oh, God. <laughs> Why do you keep doing that with your face? Because you keep saying stupid things with yours. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You'll have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Avenging Sheldon and Glenn the Battle Ostrich While the guys are often the primary targets of Penny's caustic tongue, they've also benefited from it. They took my battle, ostrich! <laughs> Oh no, not Glenn. Yes, Glenn, only bird I ever loved. <laughs> when Sheldon's World of Warcraft game gets hacked, they venture on an unsuccessful mission to retrieve the stolen virtual goods. I'm Sheldor of Azeroth. I want my things back. I don't think so. Let me see that. You, careful, that's a collectible. I know. I've always wanted one. <laughs> To add insult to injury, Leonard's car breaks down on the way home, so they call Penny to pick them up. She decides to show them how to get revenge Nebraska-style and confronts Sheldon's online nemesis. Todd Zarnecki was mean. <laughs> All right, hang on. What are you doing? I'm gonna show you how we finish a quest in Nebraska. <laughs> if Penny's words didn't sting, then her sharp kick most certainly did. We're not condoning violence, of course. Say what you will about Penny, but she knows how to get a job done. Well then, good news. Today's the day a girl's finally gonna touch you in your little special place. <laughs> now give him his stuff back. And when she goes into savage beast mode, it's usually a bonus. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.